Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by the Little Shaman Healing. That's me, the Little Shaman. Today I want to talk to you about something a lot of people have asked about, and that is the difference between narcissistic traits and pathological narcissism. Narcissism is a spectrum, and there is a large gray area regarding how someone is affected by it and how they will behave because of that. The people we usually refer to as narcissists are suffering from pathological narcissism. This means that their narcissism is pathological. It's so deep-seated and inflexible that it negatively affects almost everything about their lives. They can't see past it and they cannot adapt their perception or affect to reality even when presented with tangible proof that they're wrong or mistaken. There are many other levels of narcissism though. There are people who have narcissistic traits, but their narcissism is not pathological. This means that it does not affect their perception to the point that they can't see past it. They can usually change things, and they can usually adapt. It may be difficult, but it's generally possible. Their degree of narcissism is what we would call flexible. We see this in people who may present as narcissistic in some ways, but they don't seem delusional or unable to adapt to situations. For example, Your mother-in-law may come across as narcissistic. She may come across as arrogant and controlling. She might argue that she's right to the point of ridiculousness. However, if you present her with facts, she's able to admit that she's wrong. It may be grudgingly, and she might not like it, but she's able to adapt her stance to fit reality. This would be an example of someone who could be narcissistic, but is not pathologically narcissistic. People who are pathologically narcissistic suffer from more than just selfishness or a different perception. They are unable to change their beliefs even when clearly proven wrong. Reality that contradicts how they feel is ignored, denied, or altered to fit. This level of narcissism is considered inflexible. People who simply possess narcissistic traits don't do that. They can understand, accept, and adapt their perception to reality. People often ask if codependency is narcissism. Codependency is a generally narcissistic thing, but we probably would not call simply codependent people narcissists. Codependent people are attempting to get their needs met and validate themselves through other people, but their level of narcissism is generally not pathological. They can see that there's a problem if they're shown, and they can generally adapt their perceptions and beliefs to reality. It might be difficult for them to do initially because there's usually a lot of emotional work in order for them to see the problem, but it's by no means impossible for them. Narcissists can actually be codependent after a fashion as well. For example, covert narcissists may be codependent and they generally foster enmeshed relationships with people because they don't respect boundaries and they can't separate themselves from the external world. But generally speaking, we would not say codependent people are pathologically narcissistic. And narcissists are, of course, as generally unwilling and unable to heal their codependency as they are everything else. Identifying narcissistic traits in the self requires a level of self-awareness and self-assessment that is beyond what is generally displayed by pathologically narcissistic people. In other words, they can't see it, and because they can't see it, they're unable to change it. Another difference would be that, though people with narcissistic tendencies or traits might be overly influenced by their own feelings, they can still separate feelings from facts and from the feelings of other people. Pathologically narcissistic people are unable to do that. They believe their feelings are facts and that other people share these feelings and experiences. They essentially live in a world where everything they experience is created by and dependent on their internal feelings. People, for some reason, sometimes seem to believe that narcissists don't have feelings. This is not the case. Not having empathy doesn't mean they have no feelings at all. They certainly do, and these feelings play a huge role in their perceptions and their behavior, especially subconsciously. Codependent people, by contrast, may attach exaggerated importance to the feelings and opinions of other people, but they understand that these things are separate from their own feelings and opinions. They might have trouble with boundaries, but they do understand that other people are individual people separate from themselves. People who are pathologically narcissistic do not understand that. They believe their feelings are everyone's feelings. This is where their so-called delusional behavior comes from. If they believe they're worthless, they insist that everyone feels that way too. If they believe they're the greatest thing that ever lived, they insist that everyone feels that way. 
There's no understanding here that other people are separate and have their own feelings, thoughts, and opinions. Everything is perceived as flowing to and from the narcissist. Narcissism is defined as a failure to distinguish the self from the external world. There's no understanding that they're separate entities from the world and everybody else in it. To the narcissist, the world is perceived as literally revolving around them, as existing because they exist. This is something we only otherwise see in very young children and babies. The reason for the discrepancy between those with narcissistic traits and those who are pathologically narcissistic likely has to do with when the narcissistic wound occurred and the severity of it. The narcissistic wound is the trauma or series of traumas that caused the narcissism in the first place. People who are pathologically narcissistic may have experienced an earlier and more severe narcissistic wound than those who simply have narcissistic traits. For example, a person who was abused or neglected as an infant is likely to be more narcissistic than someone who was not. It also could have to do with the individual's personality, their biology, and many other things. Narcissistic people are still people, and we're all different with our own ways of dealing with things, coping mechanisms, sensitivities, and personalities. The mind is a remarkable thing, and the lengths it will go to to protect itself are truly amazing. So, the most noticeable difference for you to be able to tell whether you're dealing with a person who is pathologically narcissistic or who just has narcissistic traits would be their level of flexibility. Can this person admit they are wrong? Can they adapt to reality? Do they insist their feelings are facts? Do they insist their feelings are your feelings? Do they try to alter reality to fit their interpretation of things? Do they seem unable to understand that you're a separate person from them? All of these things can help you decide what you're dealing with. In the end, if a person is abusive, if they're uncaring, if they're disrespectful, if they're selfish, it doesn't really matter where on the spectrum they fall. You never have to put up with behavior that you find hurtful. I hope this cleared a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by The Little Shaman Healing. That's me, The Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful, narcissist, and psychopath-free day.